Today, I'm going to walk you through my thought process as I was creating this piece. As you're coming up with your own designs, I think that it can be a little overwhelming at first. I'm going to kind of talk you through how I came up with this design as I was working it out. If you like my videos and my tutorials, uh, please subscribe and share my channel with your friends as I'm trying to grow. So today I am working on this little wooden circle. I got this at a local store. It was on clearance, so I grabbed as many as they had. And I ended up sealing it first to kind of keep the paint from absorbing into the wood as I'm painting my dots. And then I painted a little black circle on the center. I went ahead and did a few guidelines. I think that stencil was from Happy Dotting Company uh, just to kind of um, give me something to go off since I don't really have a plan going into this one. Now here you can see that I'm loading up this pink dot with a lot of paint. It did still have a little point on it. So I took a little needle and just kind of swirled that around and that got me to get rid of that little peak and have a nice smooth dot. Here I am just using a little wooden skewer to make teeny tiny dots. I'm not going off the guy lines here. I was just going around the circle and now I am just doing sacred geometry going around. So with this pattern, all you're doing is just placing a dot between the dot and the previous rows. So I thought I was only gonna do about three rounds and I ended up doing a lot more because once I started looking at it, I realized if I pushed this center part out more, then my dots would line up better with that black circle. So I think I ended up doing one more. I think this is the last round of pink that I ended up doing. So I really just let this part grow. And here you can really see with sacred geometry how you're just placing a dot between the dots of the previous row. And then next, I ended up wanting to bring in some white. So I just placed the white dot in between these other dots. Didn't really have a plan with this, but it felt like I needed to go ahead and bring this white in early to make it make sense with the rest of the piece. So that's what I did. And then I started with my big dots. So I did a four pattern and then decided to go ahead and put another one in between those. And I ended up doing um, a little swirl with a needle to kind of smooth that out. And then here's where I started just kind of experimenting. I decided to try to put two dots on top. I was thinking more of doing like more of a triangle type shape at first. So I was like, let me just put two dots here and see what this looks like. And then I was looking at my spacing with that black line. And I realized that if I did a larger white dot, it would fall right on that black line, kind of help that disappear in the design a little bit. And then I can just kind of figure out what to do from there. And that's what I ended up going with. So with this white paint, I think I ended up dotting these twice. At this point, I am already trying to think about what I am going to do next. At first, I thought I would just walk some white dots uh, going down around the purple section. And I ended up going a different direction. Um, with these white dots, I did end up having to kind of swirl the paint around a little bit to make sure that they were nice and smooth. Uh, this white paint is a mixture of like three different paints. <laughs> um, I... I think I have some like Liquitex Basics in there and some Liquitex Iridescent Medium. And then I think it also has a little bit of um, Martha Stewart Pearl paint. So I just kind of kept adding different paints until I got this kind of shiny, pearly white paint that I was happy with that wasn't super runny. So I ended up going against walking the dots and decided to add swipes because with the wood grain, there's a lot of walking the dots I felt like would kind of disappear and you wouldn't see as much. So I thought it would be nice to add more swipes to this piece. So I ended up just doing um, these swipes going up to the side, up to that white dot. I uh, just using the nail dotting tool. I it's all I needed for them for most part. Some of them, my paint's a little thick, so I didn't get it all the way up. And in that case, I then took the little needle tool that I have and just dragged that paint out a little bit farther. And I do have this tool on my list in my Amazon list so you guys can find it. There are tool, two tools that look the same. One is a very small stylus that makes really tiny dots and one's the needle. And that's the one I use for my swipes a lot of times. 
So I really took my time with all these, just being very careful to try to get the swipes as even as possible. And I actually really enjoyed this process. And I'm already thinking about what am I going to do next? I was thinking at this point I would walk some white dots down, but then I started looking at that black circle edge and decided that I really wanted to make sure that I had a big dot fall right on that black circle. So I ended up going ahead and doing that part next. And um, with these dots, I did end up loading each of these dots up a couple of times and swirling it around with a needle to make them nice and smooth. And from there, I just kind of did that going all the way around. And I'm just doing this little combo with these big dots going all the way around on that black circle to really kind of help hide where that circle is so that it will just kind of blend in once I do the design. And this idea actually gave me just enough room to go back in um, and do the white dots that I wanted to do originally anyway. And so I did have to swirl all these out to make them nice and smooth. I try to take my time with this part. I don't press down and if your paint is still a little bit thick, sometimes I, let, I don't pull the tool out until I get to the sides. This will help avoid any peaks in the center. This and here I kind of got out of there because I wasn't taking my time. <laughs> and so I just took that little needle tool, wiped it clean and I was able to scrape that little section off. And so that's an easy way to fix that if that happens to you too. So with the white dots, I just did um, some walking the dots, starting at the bottom, moving my way up, which was the opposite of what I was going to do. I wanted to do from top going down, but I felt visually with this piece and the space that I had created that this was the way to go with this one. And so I kind of just stuck with it and it kind of became a cool look. So I'm excited that that's the way it turned out. And then next, I decided that I wanted to kind of continue the pattern that it already did with the purple and do the same exact thing with the blue, doing the two small dots on top, making that kind of almost like a triangle shape. Not really, but we're going to call it a triangle shape. And once I got that done, I ended up going ahead and just doing another big white dot because I figured this time I'd actually get to do those um, white walking the dots that I wanted to do originally to kind of frame out the piece. So I went ahead and did a bigger white dot on top. And that's just kind of how I look at things. So I'm looking at the edge of the piece now, thinking about how much more room I have before I run out of room. I want to make sure I fill up the piece as much as possible without it's um, running off to that wood bark edge. And I'm also looking at like just my spacing and how much room I have. I don't want it to be too cluttered uh, with the wood grain. I really just love the grain look. So I wanted it to shine through. So I made a lot of decisions based off of that. So I did get to do my little walking the dots going down like I wanted to here. Um, and then I was just kind of looking at it and decided that I really think I want to do another round as well, but I'm still kind of just kind of looking at my spacing and how much more room I have left. So here I decided to go ahead and do that second row, but I'm going to go up like I did in the first part to kind of make this nice thick border of white to kind of just frame the entire mandala. And I'm already looking at my spacing to see if I want to do anything in between those two white sections. But I really just love the way the wood looked. And I decided that this was going to frame the edge of the mandala and that I was going to be done. I wasn't going to grow this one out anymore because I really just wanted the wood to have a chance to shine as well. And then if you look at my black circle, I've pretty much covered up the edge all the way around. There's some type of paint on it at every section, which really kind of helps hide that. And then it gives this really cool effect of being a little bit darker in the center and then brightening up. I went with some colorful pink dots on those white dots. I really debated about that for a long time. And I did end up doing two layers of top dots on top of the teal and the purple. It's hard to see in the video, but it's like a lighter metallic pink. I mean, lighter metallic purple and a lighter metallic blue on there. And then I'm just adding white 
top dot on top of that. And I'm really happy with how this piece turned out. It was super fun for me. Hopefully by me explaining why I made the choices I did will help you when you are coming up with your original ideas. And yeah, just have fun with it. Don't overthink it, especially with mandalas. As long as you're making it symmetrical on both sides, it's, it's pretty much going to come together for you. And uh, here is the finished piece. If you liked this little version of me explaining my thought process to you as I make decisions, please let me know in the comments and please subscribe and share my channel. Thanks, guys.